broadcasting from the Blanchistan Centre. This is Phoenix FM. This is 92.5 Phoenix FM, community radio for Dublin 15. Hey everybody, it's JB Jeremy Borash and you are listening to Daryl O'Connor on the... Alright guys, and we're live here on Phoenix 92.5 FM And of course, nerdsnomedia.com, YouTube, Twitter and Twitch um, But not Mixer, because Mixer's not a thing anymore um, Sadly, rip Mixer um, I'd say we use a platform called Restream And they've uh, updated their interface recently, it's pretty sweet And uh, we'll probably will be adding some more channels onto it as well So uh, thank you for everyone who's joining us this week uh, we have a lot to get through, and obviously, before we get to it, I was on the True Penny show uh, last week talking about um, some new Japan. And uh, David, if you haven't li- checked it out, he kind of did the old switcheroo. So instead of Dave, Dave uh, doesn't watch wrestling; it's Dara doesn't watch New Japan wrestling. <laughs> so it was the same kind of same kind of feel. And I have to say, I really enjoyed it because it was the 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 Neverway Open uh, Triple Tag Team Championships. Uh, the little tournament from Summer Struggle. Really enjoyed it. It's, you know, fantastic. And uh, James Chupenny really knows his Japanese wrestling. So if you uh, want to check out a show and a series there, do check him out. It's fantastic. Obviously, if you're getting this show on there, it's no media. Um, go over to the Chupenny channel and you're able to get his whole stuff there. The man does so much. Um, there's a lot to get through. One thing as well, right? On YouTube today, now I did post it on my own personal Facebook. I am going to post it on our group Facebook on our uh, channel. Uh, it's from Super Eyepatch Wolf, and he does a whole thing on uh, villains and heels in wrestling. So it's all about why he, how to make a heel, you know, the the glory of it. And uh, man, it's I didn't realize he's such a big wrestling fan. I knew he was a wrestling fan, but I didn't realize he was that much of a mark. So it's like fair play. Um, you know, definitely do check it out. I'll actually post a link here in the chat. And um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I'm going to try to get him on. He's Irish as well, so he might actually come on. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely check him out. Uh, it's a really, really good like half an hour video, but it even goes into like New Japan and Evil Teal Turn and all that kind of stuff. Uh, super, super good video, which I would recommend uh, beyond all others that I've seen in the past couple of days. But they well, it's true, man. I I was blown away. I was not expecting to be as good as it is. Um, Dave, how are you, man? You, you took like a week off, so uh, you know that was probably a good move because last week was not good in wrestling. <laughs> anyway. Well, hey, it's a great day for wrestling, everybody. Welcome back to the only show hosted by fans that don't hate wrestling. It's good uh, to be back myself as well. Yeah, and you know, had to do a little soul searching. Took a little trip. Feel feel much much better. And you came back, which is even you know more bizarre. I would have just been like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> just gone. Yeah, I, 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 you know, pulled back in. That's what wrestling always does. It always pulls you right back does. in. Yeah. So yeah, look, uh, uh, this rewind is going to be less of a rewind than what we're normally used to. Um, we were going to I mean, look. We're at, still rewinding. Just we're just rewinding two days. Exactly, a shorter space of time than what yeah, we normally exactly. do. Um, yeah, so look, we were going to talk about SummerSlam 1999. We probably will do that um, in the near future. Um, Adam Martin is going to be joining us to talk about Brock Lesnar's run in Japan. That's going to be super fun. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we just don't know when. We were going to do it next week, but hey, WWE gave us a, another random pay-per-view next week out of nowhere. <laughs> so, You'll never see it, see it coming. coming. Yeah, like <laughs> no one did. No one saw this pay-per-view coming. Actually, what's funny about this is payback was like a rumor that was announced. And then halfway through SummerSlam, it's like, oh, so we're going to have... Actually, no. Yeah, it was like an interview backstage with Charlotte with um with um oh what's the name the boss with Sasha Banks where she's like oh, oh hey n- oh Sasha Banks is great I love <sighs> Bailey though Bailey is like my favorite female uh, wrestler forget that Sasha uh, over Bailey every day of the no, week no 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 Bailey's just great and I love heel Bailey it's the same with like Eva Emma 
Well, I'm like, yeah, okay, Eva you have Emma a point. Was, you have yeah. a point there. I do well, like all yeah, Eva, okay. all all evil Eva Emma was was she changed her lipstick and stole some eye and her hair and color her, and her hair color. I'm like, yeah. this is great. Where was this all along? And you know, all she had to do was steal some iPads. That's all she had to still, do. Still the funniest thing. <laughs> I was like, why were you stealing iPads? Um, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. But um, yeah, Monster Mo, thank you for joining me in the chat. WWE love a good supply, aren't they? Yeah, they do. And don't tell anybody. So yeah, that's yeah, what was apparently. Fun. Yeah, so this was a rumor that was kind of confirmed halfway through the show. And we will indeed have a pay-per-view for some reason the week after SummerSlam. Which is just, <laughs> I mean, it makes no yeah, sense. Like we said, you'll never see it coming. I mean, that's that's the mantra. But we can't say there's no build because Raw kind of was built. They fit like a month's worth of build in three hours. And apparently that's because Vince McMahon rewrote the whole show 20 minutes before the show started. I mean, that seems par for the course, really. <laughs> yeah, but we're ne- this is what WCW did in 2000. This is this is bad. We're like, we're seeing the iceberg right ahead of us. And we're like, hey, you know, we should probably move. And it's like, no, no, sure, it's fine. I know. I didn't. I did not see Raw. So I'm, I'm very curious what. Well, that's why the, the segment Dave doesn't watch wrestling is still working. Because if he did, it would have ruined my whole thing. So I'm glad you don't watch Raw. <laughs> but before we get to that, uh, SummerSlam was on Sunday. Um, I yeah. took the day off specifically to watch it. And then we shot a music video and I was working. So I fell asleep halfway through it, which was sad. Um, so yeah, guys, working is fun. Um, <laughs> it sucks um, but yeah I enjoyed the show overall we will kind of get into it in more detail but very weird show okay first things before we get to it WWE have moved away from the performance center and have now done this new thing it's called the Thunderdome which is the worst name ever yeah, especially when you're Irish and that's how you pronounce it but the Thunderdome is pretty <laughs> sweet I must say so what am I, am I missing the TH is that what it is yeah it's a Thunder? What is yeah. that? Thunder. You're welcome, Phoenix yeah. FM. Yeah, look, the <laughs> TH we do not pronounce in, in in Gaelic Irish, in Gaelic English. We just right. don't do it. That's uh, fair. It's yeah. fair. It's more of a D. I'm know? just. I'm gonna love this entire Thunderdome era. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was in the Anway Center in Orlando, right? Yeah, it was. Uh, but they don't actually refer to it that. They just refer it as the Thunderdome. Um, I'm gonna love this. Not no, not just you pronouncing it, but. I absolutely love this concept. I think it's great. Initially, I was like, this is the lamest thing ever. But mm-hmm. I actually, if you know what, right? I'll never forget watching WrestleMania while I was, put, while I was filling some orders for the band. And my mom mm-hmm. was helping out. And she, she didn't actually watch wrestling really that much. But me and my dad, me and my dad watch it. But mom was like, all right, look, I'll just watch some of it. Because it was like, you know, like a million hours long or whatever. And um, it was 12 o'clock at night. And it was the the Charlotte the Charlotte uh, the Charlotte match the Charlotte match, you know. And um, no, I blocked Charlotte matches out of my memory, so I can't even help you out here. <laughs> well, okay, it was, okay, it was the women's title match, the NXT title match, and uh, oh, versus Rhea, Rhea fair, Ripley, exactly, yeah. Okay, fair and, enough. And um, it has the problem that tennis has, where you know, if you're not watching it, it sounds kind of. Um, uh, I got you. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. And it was very awkward. My mom's like, "That sounds really like." And I'm like, "Yeah, it does." <laughs> so there's, no, there's no way to because if you're not watching it, and you're just a melt. It's just like at least when you're watching wrestling with a crowd, it, it you know it doesn't sound so bad. But with that, right. it's just a lot of grunting and stuff like that. And you're like, "Yeah." <laughs> it is temp- it's, a, it's a weird one it's a weird one so yeah but maybe we should I, I explain have... this concept for people who didn't get to see it basically yeah, surrounding so most, the ring so, wanna... so most of so most of what's shined in there what exactly is the turn it on it's supposed okay, to be yeah. a, a virtual fan experience I think so she she actually read your mind there Dave yeah so basically what this is right it's I'm it's the, the modern day Edgar Casey, you know exactly it's, it's yep. WWE's way of kind of getting over this you know no fan experience right so um Compared to the the PC where they would have like obviously no fans or limited fans and that would be it, they've now built they now rented out an arena, not a big arena, but by my understanding, it's a small enough arena. But um, they've, yeah, they've re- perfect they've re- size re- though. Yeah, it works great. They've rented it long term now. They leased it until like November, I think. So this is where they're going to do all their shows. And what they've done is they set up a, a ton of screens. I think there's like a thousand screens there. Yeah. And um, basically, you zoom in. Yeah. It's basically one gigantic Zoom, Zoom call. call. I'm assuming you watch 
the regular feed? Because when I was I don't watching know. it, I, didn't... I don't know. I'm actually going to sign up for it so I can. Oh, know. is there a way? Because I was wondering. Yeah, if, like... yeah. If if you go to WWE Thunderdome, um, you can actually get your ticket there or the social media, and um, yeah, that's how you can sign up. So I'm there hasn't to... signed up for it yet. I'm going to. I haven't signed up for it yet because I tried to mm-hmm. and he wouldn't let us until like Friday, and I'm like, I'm not signing up at one in the morning for that. Um. So yeah, I might do it. The only problem is, it's like. I might fall asleep because that happens. And then they ban you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, oh, oh yeah. so, sorry if yeah. I said that out loud. I hope that didn't come across. Um, what would so you say? Yeah, they ban you if, if you fall asleep. Oh, do they? Yeah. You know, so, I had yeah. wondered about that. Like, what happens if you have to go to the like bathroom and you want to go get like another drink or more so, food? So the way it works is the feed kind of rotates. So you're not always on camera as such. So you get your slots and then you kind of move out. But yeah, amongst them all, it's essentially rows and rows of screens who are virtual fans. But the audio is cancelled. So they don't actually have the audio. Um, well, I thought they the, were supposed to have the audio. Or no, was that the, all piped in? Oh, the audio is all piped in and all fake. And you can tell because it's really out of sync. And okay, also, I, see, I thought they had kind of added it. Because I noticed uh, there was points where it sounded like there was a delay, which would have made sense if they were watching a feed. Well, think about it, man. Like, not everybody has good microphones like us. Most people don't have... You know, you know, anyone who has been on calls or knows the danger of taking calls knows the the, the quality of internet audio sometimes. It's so fair. It's fair. I, I just imagine that it just wouldn't it wouldn't work. So I'm okay with the ah with the registration is closed for this show. Well, so you have to shot you have to sign up for each show. Each show, that's, yeah. That's too much. Too much. Yeah. Somebody write me a script for that. I'm not. There's no way. <laughs> no way okay well it's time for dave doesn't respond <laughs> doesn't watch wrestling right he doesn't watch wrestling enough to know that he could sign up to watch thunderdome so so dave which yes. w- which one is real oh no here we go which Multiple one is tri- real I, did no nonsense like two weeks ago where two of them were real that was just not fair well that's 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 the that's the that's the fun of the game Dave. Oh, yeah, for you. okay okay i'm in okay. i'm in okay so with the Thunderdome, right? Obviously opens up a world of different possibilities, right? right? Different problems. So, which one of these is real and which ones aren't? Or which one is real? We'll go with that one. Okay. So, was there an image from a KKK rally? Was there a live stream of CM Punk's rant against WWE? Or was there a Chris Benoit picture displayed? This was this is at Thunderdome? This is at Thunderdome on Raw. Oh, CM Punk's too obvious. Uh, I would have, I would have seen somebody would have texted me if it was cake. I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna go with C. So, on Raw, there was a KKK no! rally on the screen. And, Why? Yes, and there was multiple Chris Benoit's. Oh, well, come on! <laughs> I can't swear you're happy. This is, this is really. Oh, this is you know the SATs didn't do this to me, man. Oh man. This is not um, right. I just can't believe they didn't think this true. Like, it's like I, you know, I was wondering this though. How are you going to get away with this concept and expect people not to be like doing the Austin finger the whole time, or like to some guy fair, just for hours going suck it? Like, well, there, actually, well, here's uh, there's a good video by the Internet Historian, which I'll, I'll post as well in the chat. He's great. He is great, but one of his most recent ones is on the virus one and two, and there was this guy called Top to. Uh, too much or something like that where he would just uh randomly bomb zoom chats like classrooms and just do horrific things like pretend to be like a really racially insensitive um right you know whatever just make fun of uh, and he's like this black guy so just make fun of everybody but then he just starts tripping and his live streams are hilarious and that's probably what's going to happen here i can't believe no one has kind of jumped on that bandwagon because these are kind of open but the thing about it is WWE obviously moderate these, and your it's tied to your it's tied to your email address, I believe, and something like that. So if you're banned, you're kind of banned. But that hmm. you can just set up a burner account and do that. Like if I was Don't WWE be telling managing, people how to post racist stuff and get around it, what is no, wrong with you? Uh, I, no, I'm not saying post you know racist stuff. I'm just saying you know WWE. Welcome secure- to the Wrestling Rewind, where we show you <laughs> loopholes on how to be a racist. Well, no, it's more WWE. Here's how to improve your security. Block IPs. Oh, yeah, yeah, see so you're doing the whole side. Block yeah. IPs. You dumbasses. Like <laughs> it doesn't matter what you do. Like you know, I know you can get around with VIP. Uh, uh, a VPN, sorry, but what I would do is if I was doing that, I'm like, oh, okay, you're posting racist stuff, IP block. 
bang there you yeah. go because yeah you can just set up multiple effective. multiple email addresses and just do it all day um amateur hour amateur hour that's what this is um yeah it man is. but it, it you know i'd say like the fact that this is happening and they're very obvious as well because you, you can't help but see them like there was a teddy bear watching a lot of SummerSlam, and um uh, yeah man i just don't know who's moderating this hmm interesting <laughs> I I was wondering how you would possibly monitor it all and make sure it's I don't know I mean if they're so strict about what signs you're allowed to bring into the building then how could they possibly be okay with just letting somebody in their own home off screen grab something well, but the, you know we, we we also we can't focus on negatives this is a super cool concept and I absolutely loved the amount of pyro that they showed during SummerSlam, I couldn't tell. Oh, Some of it looked CGI. I wasn't sure. Yeah, so th- the way this works as well, so not only, also there was a fire Velveteen Dream sign on SummerSlam and um, yeah, the guy was banned for showing that, which is oh, okay. not unfair because Vel- Velveteen Dream has a lot of stuff that he needs to answer for. Let's just put it that way. Um, really oh. does. He, oh, oh, yeah, oh, man. Oh, right, they just right. keep coming. I just can't believe that he's still on TV. But um, anyway, um, yeah, so look, yeah. the same people who are running this are, I think they did the uh, NFL or basketball or something like that. But yeah, mm-hmm. they um, this is what they do. You know, they this right. is their bread and butter where they kind of bring it. Was sorry, it was basketball because the hell basketball is still running. Right, um, I think Seth was doing this with baseball. Yeah, like exactly. Something yeah. similar. Yeah. Something similar. Yeah. So this. I mean, is they not- were also doing teddy bears in the stands. So take it for what it's worth. But 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 for me, I think this is like the future of in. Uh, sports i suppose uh for the foreseeable future like it's it feels very much like the real thing um as a viewer watching it as a viewer watching it like it's it's as close as you can get i suppose without actual people Mm -hmm. being there but in a lot of ways it's kind of better as well because fans don't hijack the show you know it's kind of like well except for the ones that obviously do but i mean like but then you don't get you don't get a kofi mania you don't get daniel bryan you don't get cm punk yeah, you need some hijacking or else these great moments never happen. Yeah, but I could do without, you know, CM Punk chance for no, no reason. No, I'm not talking I, about now. I'm talking about when he was coming and they didn't want to give him the push that he deserved and the fans started going crazy for him. So that's hmm. what I'm talking about. Or like the Yes Movement or Kofi Mania. It's a great documentary, by the way. On Kofi. Yeah, but, but both of those things I wasn't a fan of. So Wait, what? Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Triple H never got the... See, that's the thing. That's, that's the thing. Da- Daniel Bryan beat Triple H at WrestleMania, and that was not oh, okay. Oh, no. That was not okay. No. That was not okay. No. So I'm just saying. And then the Kofi Mania thing, that in- interfered with Triple H title run. So I'm like... What yeah, on earth not, not is okay. wrong with you? <laughs> Look, once people don't interrupt Triple H in any way, it's fine. The minute they do it, they go on the, they go on the shit list. So it's like, no. Just saying. I got nothing. Anything else happened <laughs> in the news? Yeah, so Rey Mysterio apparently is injured again. How? He didn't do anything. <laughs> On Raw, he was attacked by Retribution. Oh, Retribution. Oh, that's the... Okay, right. And we still the have anti- no idea what these things are? No, they're still like the Antifa group or something like that. You know, but, one uh, of them had long long hair that had like a slight purple dye to it. I was trying to scope out who that might be. Well, there's... Okay, so fans believe they might have figured out who Retribution are after Raw. So Retribution showed up at the close of Raw this week. I mean, leave it to Reddit to find it out. And they took out the Mysterios. The pose down seemed to signify the stable has been established. So, we, you know, we haven't found out exactly who's in it yet, but I think it's more like the guys who are portraying them now are actually guys who are in it, guys and girls. Hmm. So for weeks, blah, 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 fans Definitely were able, girl, yeah. yeah, fans were able to peg Dominic Davalkic and Dio Madden as two the Retribution members. Shane Torn is a popular choice as well, and so was Vanessa Bourne. It's unclear if Jesse Camilla Com- uh, is still in the group. Apparently, she was. Uh, she was the member with purple, purple tips to her dark hair, okay. but the hair was hidden this week. Um, so it's possible that she wasn't in the faction. Chelsea Green, Santana Garrett, and Indy Hartwell are also popular choices. Okay, Chelsea um, Green, out of everybody you just mentioned, is the only person I know, and that's because she's dating Zack Ryder. Well, here's one as well. There was a theory going around that Ember Moon was going to be in the in the stable. Which... Oh, yeah, whatever happened to her? She came out with that crazy stunner off the top rope, and then nothing. Yeah, and then nothing. So, look, it's... <sighs> well, I was going to say right now, that sounds like a terrible group. Yeah, like because you don't know anybody. 
That's and I and I do watch when I don't fall asleep. I do watch NXT takeovers. <laughs> sure, I did fall asleep this time. Um, I heard the ladder match is good. I'm gonna try and watch that. But I mean, I that's what that, it's one of the things I don't get is they seem to bring people up from NXT who aren't actually on the weekly shows. They bring up the people who are still in development. It's like they use the weekly shows just to try and get ratings or back when we could do live shows to, you know, get people to come out to the shows. So it's very bizarre. Like Braun Strowman, for instance, I, I don't remember ever seeing him on NXT pre coming into the Wyatt family. I'm sure he was, but you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, I think it's very short sighted, but then again, it's still WWE. So everything they do is short sighted. Yeah. You know, it's like, I don't like this faction at all. Well, here's the thing, right? If it's retribution, what are they seeking retribution retribution for? For right, because nothing was really done against them. They're just developmental stars. It's not like people who are fu- like if it was people who were fired, that would make sense. Oh, but this doesn't make any sense. Or if it was people who were gone, like for example, CF Punk came back and was really leading a faction. Yeah, okay, that would make sense. This makes no like a bunch of people from NXT. Uh, what are you upset okay, about? What if? What if those firings in April? What if they did bring a lot of them back? See, that would and make that's sense. Who it is? That would be cool. And I'm not just saying this because I want Anderson and Gallus back. I'm. Saying... <laughs> well, they burned the bridges to AEW, so they're never going to AEW. What did? They, no, what did they do? They they're, they're OG Bullet Club. Yeah, but they apparently agreed to go to AEW. WWE gave them lots more money, and they embarrassed the books. So that's why they never. That's why they're an impact at the moment, because they have nowhere else to go other than Japan. I mean, they could make a ton of money in Japan, but what? I wait. So they. Oh, okay. So they leveraged AEW to get a better contract with WWE and then no, WWE fired no, them? No, apparently, according to their Talk and Shop podcast, they okay. were going to AEW. There was like their, that was their goal. And right. then the Triple H, you know, wanted them to resign and pretty much was like, here, look, how much do you want to stay? And they kind of palmed it off or whatever. Then they had a match in Japan. Where Triple H was their tag team partner, and after the match, he was like, "Look, here's how much we're going to offer you," and it was ridiculous amounts of money, like a couple of million. Like, right? I thought they made. I thought they signed a pretty lucrative contract. They did right before is, getting fired. Yeah, and this is what happened. So it was like it was either a couple of million or it's the guts of a million or whatever like that over the past couple, over a couple of years. And um, right. yeah, they're like, "Look, we can't turn that down." They signed, and then they were let go. But they had agreed verbally to go to AEW because apparently they met the books at a, at a, at a food court uh, at some point. Uh, no. huh. yeah. Well, you know, I will say this as much as I love these guys, they did the same exact thing to TNA. Yeah. AJ Gallus and Anderson had a verbal commitment to Dixie that they were going to go back to TNA and then WWE came a calling. Yeah. So they but, do have a history of doing this and I love them. But, but look, here's the I'm thing. I'm not at shocked, end, I guess. But look, at the end of the day, you know, it's the amount of money they were offered was, you know, life change of money. Yeah, why wouldn't you take it? Exactly. And that's what they said. And but everybody in AEW should understand that because they've all been in that situation. Yeah, but. Well, it, well the higher ups have been in that situation. Like, Jared, I don't. But it, it's who. It's who they embarrass. They embarrass the wrong people. So that's eh, why they're. That's, that's why they're, they're an impact, you know? Whatever. I <laughs> give it. Uh, they'll they'll be in AEW again. No, I'm not. I don't think so. AEW can't afford it, man. AEW are almost done. Like if, if they oh, don't, start, you think you if think they, if they don't start getting butts in the seat soon, uh, they're done. Like they're 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 not WWE. They're not successful enough to write out this pandemic. You know, like well, even though they might be great and all, um, it's true. They're not. The, WWE. Uh, their issue. Their issue, in my opinion. Oh, this is controversial, but. My, their their issue, in my opinion, was the whole every talent is going to get, what was it, half a million guaranteed, essentially. They're yeah. going to get health insurance. They're going to get, the women are going to be paid um, equivalent to the men, which sounds terrible out of context. Don't splice that together with my racism comment from earlier. Um, <laughs> but what I'm, what I'm saying is that it's you, people should be paid based on how the talent's going to be used. And it just, as soon as I started seeing that, I was like, okay, this just seems like a way for Brandy Rhodes to make a lot of money. 
I don't know. It's the whole thing's been oh, look, we're never getting an interview with anybody from AEW after that. It was nice knowing you, Internet. <laughs> look, AEW has a lot of good ideas. But yeah. the prob- the problems started coming in as soon as they brought in Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's we don't it. Need to rehash it. We 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 You know, and, and that's the problem. And it's the systematic problems that happen when you have these demagogues with an axe to grind. They they make really dumb business decisions. And what you what you said is actually kind of true. Because look, there is no reason why Becky Lynch, when she was there, shouldn't be paid as much as I don't know who else, um, Seth Rollins, right? Because exactly. she, or even more because she was the biggest star of the company. I right? agree with that hundred percent. Unbelievably, like that's that makes sense because she's a she was the face of the company, right? The biggest draw of the company. Yeah. But Brandy Rhodes making as much as Cody Rhodes. Uh, what? It's not logical to me in any it way. It just makes no like, sense. You know, it makes no sense. It's like that'd be like ridiculous. saying that. Like, I'm just gonna pick somebody random here. Uh, well, I guess Carmella is money, so that's a bad choice. But oh, like Alicia Fox should not be paid the same as Becky Lynch. Right on, exactly. You know, it, it's it's not a gender thing. It's it's more like a merit thing. It's like, listen, wrestling is about making money, and if you don't right. draw, you shouldn't make you shouldn't make money. Like, and it did it. seem like their announcement of oh, we're doing this. It was more of a virtue signaling thing, not a proper business thing. Yeah, I I think like it's not as transparent as TNA was um, under Dixie. But it's starting to really show that. And here's the thing. This stuff works great when it was when you could have those fans in the arena, right? And the fans could come and be like, oh, look how great you are. Can't do that now. No. (laughs) So, no, it's not going to work that way. You know, WWE are able to pull these maneuvers because they have such a big war chest. AEW don't have the war. Like, here's the thing. If they did, their TV deal was renewed in March. Sorry, February. And they were lucky that the pandemic didn't hit beforehand because it never would have been renewed. That's the right, truth of it. Yeah. Call a spade a spade. Now it would have been it. That would have then been done. So they might be able to limp on, but they're going to have to start making decisions that make sense. And, you know, I hear they want to bring fans back in. It's like, oh, that's a bad idea. But they might have to to stay afloat. Like That's the thing. WDB can have their virtual Zoom calls because they figured out how to do it. But that probably cost millions. Absolutely. I was wondering millions. how much that costs to do. I mean, just the has setup. To cost, has to cost millions. There's no way it won't. Nuts. It doesn't. And here's the thing. They're not making a gate either because they're not charging. Right. So it's like. Yeah, I was trying to explain that this weekend uh, to my friend. We were talking about wrestling hmm. in general. And she was like, I don't understand. Like, why would they have troubles making money? They're still doing shows and all that. I'm like, yeah, but they don't. They don't have the live gate attendance. They yeah. don't have the house shows. They don't exactly. They, they she's like, but they still sell merch. I'm like, yeah, but not as much as if it's being sold in the arenas and exactly. stuff like because that. Because like, here's, here's, here's the thing, right? A, a mom brings her son or daughter, right? Yep. And then their friends, right? So let's just say you have one guy that goes may, might buy a t-shirt, probably won't, right? Right. But. You have a fa- uh, either a family or a man bringing a bunch of kids. Yep. That's six or seven T-shirts. That just oh, bought yeah. purely, purely because you're like, oh, hey, look, remember when you went to the wrestling show? Because for them, it's not a TV show. It's a big event. It's a big it's wrestling an experience event. Exactly. that you want to remember. Absolutely. Exactly. That's and why that's Brock Lesnar's whole Suplex City exit and then he would put the name of the town was a brilliant. Yeah, they had to Absolutely. print a bunch of shirts for it, but I'm sure they sold like crazy because those are unique. Absolutely. And, and that's... And that's what they're missing, you know. So unless unless WDB are, you know, gonna figure that out, they're not able to capitalize on that. But you know, again, you're not gonna pay for a Zoom call. Like if you're charging for this, you're not gonna pay for it. Because it's like, yeah, no, I'm not doing that. But what they could do is they could work it into their subscription where every WDB network subscription gets free access to one show a month or something like that. That would make that sense. That would be that would be cool. But it's like I don't know. Like, yeah, I looked at the setup for this. I looked at the staging, the pyro, the the special effects, everything they were doing, and I was like, "This cost a ton of money." Oh, unbelievable! Of money. On. But here's the thing: it it needs to be done because WDB is all about spectacle. Like you take yeah. that out, and you're kind of left with very little. Now, I like the empty arena shows for the most part. Um, I, I like this more though. Oh, I like this much more. This I like this much more. Yeah, well, it's because it feels like feels like WWE. Well, you know what it was when I was. 
going on to the WWE Network to watch SummerSlam, you know, it pops up and says you can jump to this section or jump to that section, like this match, this match, this match. Mm. And when I saw those thumbnails and it just at first glance at me looking at the TV, I was like, Am I, is this the wrong SummerSlam? There's an audience. Yep. Yeah, and it wasn't it until I actually mean. turned yeah. it on and I was like, oh, this is cool. Because my mom was, was um, walking by and she's, oh, that looks like wrestling. And that was her words. Mm. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah, it kind of does. Like, that's the thing. Even, like, it's the closest thing you can get now. And it's like, I think they figured out, you know, with the cinematic matches and with that, they have a whole new arsenal. Um, AEW didn't do that. AEW kind of just went, we're just going to do what we do. And it's like, yeah, that's not going to work. <laughs> like, that's not going to work long term, right? It's, you have to kind of adapt. And no disrespect to AEW. Look, you know, as you said, we might never get interviews with AEW stars. I'm like, all right, well, you know, fair enough. But, it's like we're not saying anything that doesn't really need to be said or anything that um, isn't staring you in the face. Because, look, as, as much as WWE might get railed, they'll be able to keep going. And this show in this format was very enjoyable. Actually, all, all the shows are very enjoyable, despite the, the trolling. Like, it's it's the first time since the pandemic hit where you can actually go, well, you know what? If this is what wrestling is like now, from now on, hmm. fine. You and know, even fine. the wrestlers, when they came out, they, they loved like, it. Yeah, yeah it might have been it. Drew McIntyre was like, this is pretty cool. cool. Yeah. yeah, there was Drew McIntyre, yeah, and you're like, yeah. well, because, yeah, at the end of the day, like, I imagine they probably piped that in, over, like, the sound over the speakers to give them, like, reference to the sound. Logically, so it's not just going yeah. to TV. Um, but, yeah, it's great. The commentary got awful, though. Oh, my God, like, nightmarishly bad. Where like, is Renee Young? Well, she's fired. She's gone. Wait, what? Oh whoa! You didn't notice? Okay, no. Yeah. What are you talking about? Renee is gone. They, they. She can't get fired. No, she's gone. She quit. No, she's not. That's the. That's... No, no, she quit. She's done. She quit. She quit. Yeah. Why? She? What? What? What do you? Okay. How whoa, is this whoa, whoa, not? in Dave doesn't watch the news. Because I thought you knew this. Is the no, well, story. Well, I knew this. When did this happen? This happened last week. What? I wasn't here last week. You watched SummerSlam. <laughs> I they, was the whole SummerSlam. I was like, this feels really weird without they Renee. Closed, they closed the pre show by R- Renee Young saying goodbye to everybody. Well, I didn't see the pre show. It's not it's not on it's not on the feed when you go back and watch it after the fact. <laughs> okay, so here's so here's the news, right? Renee Young apparently gave her it was reported that she gave her notice to WWE and nobody knew last week and nobody knew when she was going to quit, right? So they closed the, the the pre-show by saying, hey, Renee, this is your last day in WWE. Thanks for everything. And it was a big, tearful, sad thing and all that kind of stuff. Yes, she's done. Now, here's the thing. Rumors she's going to go to AEW probably eventually, but she probably has like a massive non-compete clause. Um, so it'll probably be a couple of months. But, she can get picked up by any sports Well, a, she has a cooking book coming out soon, so she's probably going to be busy with that. Get the... Get, Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold okay, on, go, on, on. go on. You are not telling me that Renee Young left the WWE to go promote a cooking book. No. This is clearly a joke. No, she it's not. She was sick. It's not. She was quarantining because of Moxley or something, right? <laughs> no. Uh, look, apparently what happened was she was very hurt by the way WWE treated her after she got the virus. Um, apparently no one rang to check up on her, and she was just kind of annoyed by it. And then she got lots of heat backstage for going public. Um, so yeah, that's that's what, and then her show got cancelled. So she's like, All right, whatever, gonna peace out. So yeah, she probably will end up somewhere else, but for the time being, she's like mad into cooking at the moment. So she has a cookbook coming out. This is all true, this is all happening. This is not happening, it is. <laughs> what <laughs> I couldn't make it up. I... I'm sorry I had to find out this way. I, I'm <laughs> devastated. I really liked her. So did I. I love Renee Young. She's so great. She's like my oh. favorite. She's like my favorite part of WWE for ages. But see, she had to go marry John Moxley. So, you know, her time was a time was a ticking. I, I uh, okay. Yeah, there we go. You know, don't so, worry. She, they she didn't even replace a... her on the booth either. At least they gave it, it was a two person desk for the night. So that explains why it wasn't three people, I guess. So oh. They gave her like the seat of honor kind of in memorial for the night. But um, that's why they brought wow. it. That's why they brought in. Um, what's her name? Beth Phoenix. That's why they brought in Beth Phoenix for the past couple of months to kind of replace her. What? 
Yeah, Beth Phoenix has been replacing over the past couple of months, dude. I don't. Can we get to the show? <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this has put a damper on your entire day, hasn't it? I. Okay. Okay. So, okay. the show started off with um, the first of two title matches for Oscar. So the story going into this was um, Sasha Banks and Bailey are double. Champions. How did she? I don't believe you. <laughs> what well, about what part? I mean, I... <sighs> okay. I know she had the virus, right? She was home. She came back. Talking Smack was cancelled. I did like the bump. You ever watched the bump on the WWE Network? I've never, I've, good. Ne- I've never watched the bump. I just yeah. I, I okay, she was. She's not on that. I just AJ was, so I just feel like I mentioned that. I'm just. I'm. Tr- this is my mind right now. My mind is a jigsaw puzzle of wrestling. It's like find solace in something. Like we're gonna talk about AJ. Like I, I don't even. This is. He's not even on the show. I don't. She's not on the show. How she's what? Woo. Okay. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. It's out of my system. Let's talk about women's wrestling. Great. Is it, is it out of your system? Or do, no, or, or, I mean, or, I don't know. Do you want me to get proof that she's left? I, I want. I guess. Can I? Okay. Can you send me like? The, okay. I want to see the WWE website. We wish you the best in your future endeavors. Find me that. Okay, hold on. We're, we're gonna do some. Uh, we're gonna do some professional on-air googling here. Yeah. Well, you know. Let's see. Life is googling. If you want a job, apparently, I've learned. Uh, okay. I don't believe this. We're gonna show. We're gonna show my phone to the screen, right? Renee Young, what departure? What? Yeah, Renee Young confirms departure from WWE Digital Spy two days ago. Renee Young reveals the reason for her departure twenty three hours ago. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> She's gone. <laughs> and here well, that and here, sucks. I look here's some you know YouTube videos about it. Uh, how did you miss this? It's everywhere. Nobody. <laughs> it's everywhere. No, nobody told. Why do you? Why, why didn't you text me this week? Because I thought you saw it. <laughs> Where would I see this? <laughs> see, because it's not. It's not a gimmick. Dave really doesn't watch wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> I watch pay per views. <laughs> That's it. But, oh, I missed uh, the pre-show, <laughs> so apparently. <laughs> Yeah, to be fair, I thought they would have done a bigger thing during the show. They didn't. They were just like, oh. Well, hey, they learned with her husband not to. <laughs> that's probably why. But they just kind of were like, oh, bye, Renee. I wouldn't mind. She looked like amazing as well. I'm like, oh, she's all dressed up. Look, she's just, they're probably going to do a thing. No, bye, Renee. It's like, oh, man, you could have at least called the show or, you know, whatever. It's just, it was weird. She had like a one week nose period. Oh, wow. Like, oh, she un- she's unloading on this company. Yeah. <laughs> it's rape. She's not Ooh, happy. Wow. She is not happy. That These day. are like actual sources, not like Bleacher Report crap. Like real news no, is real, happening. Here. Yeah. Yeah. It's not broken news. It's like real like sources. So there you go. She was a cast member on Total Divas. I don't remember that. Uh, she was there with, with Moxley. I, I, I don't watch wrestling. You think I watched Joel Divas? I just I wasn't aware of this. Well, right. she was there for eight years. Yeah, she was there for a long this period time. This show is now officially the Renee Young Memorial Show at this point. Oh, my goodness gracious. We're just going to have the bear with us while Dave you know, gets over this. If he can, I don't think he's going to be able to. Huh. Huh, huh, huh. Huh. You're welcome for the dead air radio, folks. I just, huh? Well, okay, that's right. This. What surprises you most about it? Why are you finding it so difficult? Well, I mean, she broke. She... I don't. I'm just. She broke. She broke that glass ceiling. She was the first female to actually be a, a competent lead commentator, like full time Michael Cole style. She worked her way up, so like we all saw it coming for a really long time. Mm. She's young. She's mm. only thirty four. Yeah. She she's Canadian, I think. She is Canadian. Yeah. I don't know how that's relevant. I'm done. That's that's that's. I'm done. You're done. Yeah, I'll see you guys next week. No. <laughs> All right. So yeah, Bailey defeated Oscar. The match sucked. It was whatever. 
I don't think the match sucked. It was, it was just it was Sasha versus Asuka was much better. It, yeah, it was very underwhelming. Like the whole point of this was to kind of set up the <laughs> overarching. Dave story. now <laughs> Dave now trashes the SummerSlam card. <laughs> <laughs> you have yeah you have to pull in your uh your disappointment here for i do it's very very professional of me to go on oh. for about 10 minutes of pure shock and disbelief <laughs> i mean last time i felt this way was when paul london got fired and i cried i ran out of my dorm room i fell onto the quad on my hands and knees and i cried that is a true story i don't know why i shared that but it's a true story <laughs> i i look here's the thing you know at least Triple H can't get fired, so that's the good thing. Oh, screw you. He got demoted. <laughs> right. So, all right. All right. right. Ba- Bailey defeated Oscar in a less than stellar match, but this was to set yeah, up was... the match later on and obviously right. to set up the kind of break with um, Bailey and and Sasha because that's coming now at payback when they lose the belts. Yeah, that's it's, I, I'm tired of like that transparent booking. Yeah, but it's WWE though. That's, yeah. This is, this is what they do this is what they do they telegraph everything and yeah as soon as, soon as this happened I and mean, we could just talk about the both matches together because it makes yeah. more sense logically yeah. as soon as oscar beat sasha i went oh they're gonna lose their titles this is time for that like year-long rumored breakup that they're gonna do i want to yeah. say this though sasha banks can wrestle man oh man she's great that, she's that so sunset good. flip power bomb she did off of the apron i don't know how she did it there but were so like, many things she did that were so fluid and, and so dynamic that it, I kind of fell in love with her again as a, as a performer. I really did. Bailey, her match against Asuka was unbelievable. Bailey, Sasha, and Asuka are like three of the best like in the company at the moment. And they just they, they have it all. And Sasha yeah. Banks, you kind of get a bit... You're surprised by how good she is, if that makes sense, yeah. because you're not expecting her to be so good. She but, is this is this wrong to say she looks too good to be as good yeah. of a wrestler as she is? Absolutely. Like I know exactly what you mean. I know that sounds yeah. kind of sexist, but I swear to God, it's not. It's like when you see Bailey, you're like, ah, Bailey, like love you, but you know, whatever. right? And you see Sasha, and you're like, oh my god, like that's unbelievable. Like she looks incredible, and then she wrestles, and you're like, oh my god, she's unbelievable, <laughs> right? Yeah. And then you're just like, wow, okay, you're just complete. You're, you don't expect because it's this is WWE's fault. Right, it is. We've been it's a hundred. It's a hundred percent WWE's fault. Where like you see like basically a supermodel or whatever, then like there's no way she's gonna be at wrestle, and then she doesn't, and you're like, well, there you go. So then when it happens, and you're like, oh my god, what? It's totally WWE's right. fault, and it it, it is the, like obviously women's wrestling. I'm a big fan of it, big proponent of it. The knockouts kind of sh- really broke that ground, but that right. was TNA, and that was kind of expected. Like it was kind of the opposite where no matter who you were, who you looked like, you go and have great match. AEW kind of do the same thing, but WWE's whole indoctrination for 18 years has been attractive, like super attractive women cannot wrestle. Attractive right. women can wrestle, but it's going to be limited. And that, and now all of a sudden they're completely changing it. So it's still kind of, weird to to see you know but yeah it would be like expecting tori wilson to be the same caliber wrestler as natalia you know absolutely what I mean? that yeah. that case in point tori wilson stacy keebler um yeah. uh, you know pretty much anyone for that time period where like yeah. mickey james who would be like that generation's bailey like, right right yeah she, you know she could she was probably the best of the bunch, but looking back, exactly. she wasn't as good as what we have. Oh, no, definitely now. not. Well, not definitely even close. Not. But that's across the board. Like the rest, of, I saw something really dumb the other day. Um, you know, oh, WWE's going back to PG fourteen, and it's going to save wrestling. And I'm like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's, it's do people not. not remember that the Attitude Era was PG? Yeah, it's like Are they not familiar with that. It's like, but go back and like we go back and watch the Edge there, and the wrestling was not good. The it shows was. were fun, but the wrestling wasn't good. The wrestling, any you take any match from the past ten years, and it's going to be better than any match in the Edge there. And what I mean about it, actually in the ring, that's not right, the right. problem. The problem is they can't tell stories. Mm-hmm. So if you so if you add you know blood and guts and swearing and all this kind of stuff, like they brought in swearing now to 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 WWE, and it's like oh yeah, it's a bit edgy, but they still have the same problems. It's more effective when it would happen uh, like once a month, a wrestler would use a swear word and a tame one. But yeah, like, like I, I like what Drew McIntyre said about Randy Orton in his promo. 
Right. I was like, oh, okay, that that's that's because it hits, right? It hits, and it's realistic because it's that's how Scottish people speak, right? It's like that makes yeah. more sense. And it's like, okay, cool, right? That's fine, but you know, to go over the top like AEW do, it's like, okay, you know, whatever, or or even in the actual area where we saw where you know we have fun looking at the signs. And you're like, okay, like, what's that going to do going back? You know, it's, it's kind of building the stories. And, you know, this is what we're saying with Bailey, Sasha, and Asuka. It's like, the matches are unbelievable. The presentation's great, but the booking is transparent. We knew that Asuka was going to walk out with the belt. And we know that the breakup's going to happen. And you can see it right. coming a mile away. I wouldn't be surprised if this whole payback pay-per-view was solely for that reason. To get that done. Could be. Anyway, could be. So, so look, yeah, Oscar is your new WWE Raw Women's Champion, yep. and she deserves it. You know, I love Oscar. I think she's great. I think, I think she's fantastic. Um, she's absolutely one of my favorite wrestlers. Also, she has the cutest YouTube channel ever. Um, totally to check she? it out. Yeah, she she was doing more. I mean, it's no r Truth's TikTok because that's probably the greatest thing in the world. But well, Oscar has a, a YouTube video for putting together a gaming cabinet completely in japanese and it's amazing and i'm like oh <laughs> this is great I'd, I'd, I'd enjoy that yeah no she's she's just like oh Oscar, you're the best <laughs> so it's just it's it's good I'm, I'm happy for her to you know to get this push because she seems to be now like a really good project for the do for vince i think he think he's finally got oscar you know he finally's like right this is who we have and they're gonna push her to the moon so that's fantastic yeah she's been there a lot longer than i remember oh yeah she's there ages yeah, you know, she, she's really settled in. She has. She's great. Um, the Street Profits had a ugh, match eh. with Andrade and Angel Garza. I did not like this at all. There's not one thing I liked. There's one thing I liked. Right. I, and I don't know which of the... Sh- I don't even know who did it. I, mean, I think it was Garza, actually, right? No? I don't know. Who cares? One of these four people, shows how much attention, attention I paid, did a moonsault where they actually landed completely 180 of where they took off, kind of like in Rob Van Dam style of being able to change your position in midair. And I thought that was absolutely fantastic. I don't know how they were able to do it. I just, man, I just, look, none of these people matter. Well, and dry, I mean... And the worst part, what I mean by that is, Paul Heyman tried to make Angel Garza and Andrade matter, but then they bury them for like a month straight. So it's like, okay, they do nice things, but what's the point? Um, so it was just, it fell, it fell very flat. It fell very like a time filler. Mandy Rose. It was, only, it was the shortest match of the night. Yeah. It was not seven. counting the pre-show. So yeah, it was like seven minutes. Mandy Rose versus uh, Sonia Deville, which was supposed to be a hair versus hair match. Then they change it to another disqualification loser leaves town match. Yeah, we were excited for so, this hair versus hair concept. Yeah, yeah, yeah we what, were. What, it, it, what it's happened a, here? It's a SummerSlam tradition, actually, looking back. It seems to be. It kind of is, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's weird. That's one that only recently have I been like, oh, well, they do this at SummerSlam a lot. Um, okay, well, apparently what happened was Sonya Deville was like home invaded. Like, I'm legit. sorry, what now? Yeah, this is a thing. By apparently, retribution? No, like in real life. Oh, so, that sucks. Yeah, um, so, you know, that sucks for her. Uh, but apparently she's been given time off now to kind of like recover from that, which obviously you'd have to. So that's yeah. why she's been written off TV. Now I had they an issue ex- with this match. They never explained why it's not a hair versus hair match anymore, but okay. Well, the good news is I didn't watch any of the build up, So, <laughs> uh, you know, I most, you know, most of it, Sonya Deville and Mandy Rhodes are best friends right. and, well, but here, here's my issue. Oh, I don't even know if I should say this. I've made so many comments that can be taken out of context. I'm just going to say it anyway. I'm, I, my whole, I'm just digging it. I'm going to dig it deeper. What was Mandy Rose wearing? I'm going to refresh my I'm gonna refresh my memory of exactly what she was wearing. What on earth was that? You have one of, she's very talented, but she, I mean, her whole gimmick is that she's like this golden goddess, this stunner. Yeah. And what, what? What was she wearing? She was all, she had this like weird white kind of coveralls that still showed, obviously had still showed her chest, but like her stomach was covered. It was very bizarre. I was like, what are you going for here? 
It was not complimentary to her body at all. I'd love to see what's going on in Dara's search history right now. I'm just trying to like find out, you know, Mandy Rose. Let's see. Just do Mandy Mandy Rose at SummerSlam. That's what I did. Let's see. Of course, you used the bright browser for this download below and link below. There we That's, go. We uh, got a cheap pop in our sexist moment of the night. <laughs> Okay, well, but, no, but to be fair, uh, I, I want to wait, wait, before you say that, I want to preface this with something. The last time I was on this show, I made a comment about not being a fan of Triple H when he would wear the pants versus wearing the trunks because I thought it was a better look. Yeah. So, this is, I had, there's no double standard here. I just want to be clear about that. I'm now applying this to Mandy Rose. Well, let's repackage this in a non sexist way. So, OSW review to have a segment called What Bar. So, What Bar was Mandy Rose. That's just a, or Mandy Rose. I agree. Yeah, she, yeah, man, that was not a good look. I think even the way her hair and everything was presented. It yeah, looked, it was it like she had wet hair. It yeah, was just not her. Not her. It looked like someone different. Like, yeah, if you even look at the, I'm here on Google Images, and um, pretty much every other depiction of her is gorgeous. I'm not saying that she isn't gorgeous, obviously, but it's like, yeah, d- did her no favor. No favors at all. She, and yeah, she looked like a, a gold whisper bar. That's what I'm going to say she looked like. Yeah, she, she was demoted from goddess. Yeah, no, not good. Not good. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. You know, I feel like I've made a lot of friends this show. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, not a sexist. <laughs> I don't. Listen, I, I liked it when Triple H wore less clothing as well. That's so fair. That's take it fair. for what it's worth. You know, that's what wrestling is. You know, it's supposed to be, you know what it is. It's because of your, uh, your, your pedigree of, um, wow. Getting the triple H reference in. Uh, ultra you viol- focused, no, you don't even yeah. know what you're going to say. You focus no, I- the sentence around using the word pedigree. And now you're just trying to think about what to say. So please okay. Okay. tell me about your, my pedigree. Your lineage of death matches where you're supposed to wear as less, as less clothing <laughs> as possible. Right. <laughs> that's what it is. That's what that's. It is. Yeah. All right. Speaking of death matches. Um, we had a street <laughs> fight next. This was amazing. Uh, Seth Rollins versus Dominic Mysterio. Now, can I just say, Dominic Mysterio is terrible. <laughs> no. No, he is. He's not. He's so awkward. He can't How throw old a punch. is the kid? He can't throw a punch. And I'm not saying that, well, I'm, some, that, I'm, not saying that I'm some, you know, incredible, super fit person anymore. But I know how to throw a punch. And this guy cannot do it. And it's okay, like, he should probably be better at 23. It he would, can't do with, it. It's with like, Ray being his dad. He throws a little punch and you're like, oh, man. Mom. Now, that said, he did a couple cool lucha moves. He but it was some, also yeah. kind of like, well, okay, we expected that to happen. Yeah, like, yeah. I think Seth even said that in a promo or something. Like, yeah, it's like, if, if you can't, well, there is a whole thing that, who's Eddie supposed to be his real dad? Um, that's supposed to be, you no. Know, realistic well isn't that why he did the frog splash yeah that's what's supposed to be right but <laughs> and seth does the frog splash I, as a tribute I, and sasha I, does the frog splash as a tribute it was a it was a it was a frog splash uh spectacular at SummerSlam. i don't know but li- leaving the conspiracy theories aside <laughs> uh dominic mysterio he should, look he should be better than he is um like wow, sound like terrible people, but I agree no, but he you. should be like he he had a main like quasi main event. He had the oh, longest like, match of the night. Yeah, and look, it wasn't a bad match. It's just like it was, it, yeah. it, it, he he's young, he's a young fella, and he's like send him off to Japan, send him mm. down to Mexico. You know, get that kind of experience in it. He yeah, just, get him out of the country. Now he he looks like <laughs> he look he looks like a creator wrestler. Right. He does. I'm surprised he's not more fit, to be honest yeah, with you. See, he, it goes both ways, people. <laughs> like, honestly, I was surprised with his physique. I don't know. And look, I'm not now gonna, I sound like Kevin Nash. Yeah, like that's not I don't know. It's just this is the problem with like second generation stars. Um mm. they're always gonna be compared to to their dads or or whatever. Um Right, you can never be. A, I mean, Ray Mysterio is a once in a lifetime. Yeah, a once in a lifetime talent, talent right? It truly um, is. But, but the problem is, instead of Dominic Mysterio coming out and just being himself, as in like his own thing, he's leaning so heavily on being a Mysterio that's like, oh, you're not helping yourself. You're, that seemed to be what they were going for yeah. in terms of the storyline. I will say, I I love this match. I thought the storyline was, was great. The match yeah, it was. Re- the match was really good. And, uh, and by the way, the, that beating that Dominic took on, I guess it was Raw a couple mm. weeks ago when they oh, showed that package. Absolutely. That was brutal. But even the kendo stick um, marks on... 
That's what I'm saying. Rollins. Yeah. On Rollins yeah, that, after that the match too. as well. You're like, yeah, they really went for it. And look, you know, if this is the best that Dominic can do, well, look, he's, it's serviceable, but he'll never be a main eventer. You know, he'll never Wait, be a big is he star. signed? Is this, oh, he's signed. Yeah, he, he is signed. Oh, I thought this was like a one-off. No, no, no. It, it's signed. But, the, my, 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 you know, the problem with this, and I, I want to be wrong, but I've seen this before. You've seen this before where, right? you know, it's not like a Randy Orton where he's so, you don't, you wouldn't even think he's related to Kel by Bob Orton. Exactly. He's more like uh, Ted DiBiase Jr., where he's trying to be mini- his dad and it's like well i met him once i got my picture with him oh yeah well yeah he seems like yeah. a nice guy but he, you know. he smelled very nice i told him that he got a little weirded out i walked away <laughs> yeah what do you want me to do with that <laughs> <laughs> i don't know he just he did i we we, we he put his arm around me for to, <laughs> to get the picture and the first thing that came out of my mouth was you smell really good <laughs> And I didn't, it just came out. And then he gave me this look and I, I was like, I'm going to leave. I don't know, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever he uses, somebody. Buy. Well, look, at least, at least you said it to him and not to some diva because you might get restraining order. So it's very true. Yeah, that's it's very, very true. true. Yeah, <laughs> it's like, okay. No double standard. No over double here. standard. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. Anyway, smells aside. Um, <laughs> Or Ted DiBiase Jr. suffered from what I think Dominic Mysterio is going to suffer from if he doesn't create his own. Like, the best thing he could do is beat the hell out of Rey Mysterio and be like, I'm my own man. I'm yeah, not. Yeah, that you. would be kind of cool to see. And that's what you know they what this do. match reminded me of it, in a weird way. It reminded me of a Cody Rhodes match. That's the problem. That's the problem. It's like, it's literally trying to be this thing that you're not. Like, it feels so ill fitted. Like they, it, the whole spectacle around it. I mean, I was captivated. I loved it. It was like the first, it was like when Cody won the NWA championship. I really loved that match. I really mm. bought the story. The problem is then that was the storyline or at least the setup for the match that he would have every week there. Every week. Yeah, exactly. Like it's, it's, it's cool <laughs> as a moment, not as your, like your gimmick or your constant match. Where do you go from this? That's the thing. Like where is, Dominic Mysterio going to go next week? Is his dad going to come out with him to every match? Is you know is it going to drop him off from school? Is is that what this is? I don't know. Uh, and by the way, listeners, if you hear something in the background, my neighbor's mowing their lawn, so I apologize. <laughs> um, okay, one thing as well, I was disappointed that Ray Mysterio's wife didn't wear a mask as well. I thought that would have been fun. That that would have been fun. <laughs> you know, you know what? I thought Dominic was a, he. Uh, okay, let's point out. I, I did enjoy Seth Rollins. Rey Mysterio outfit that he was wearing as a callback mm. to uh, SummerSlam 15 years prior when Rey faced Eddie, if I'm getting yep. this correct. Yeah. I thought that was really cool. That was very yep. well mapped out. I'm really happy for the seamstress that she still has a job during this time. They actually referenced that as well on commentary, which was cool. Yeah, what, what do you think? I have a memory and I'd remember that? Of course they referenced it. <laughs> um, okay, guys. I mean, gonna... it wasn't Renee Young on commentary referencing it. Well, guys, we're going to put a pin in here. Uh, we're going. If you're listening to this on Phoenix 92.5 <laughs> FM, because we've reached our hard break, uh, we will be back here on the stream for the remainder of the show, guys. If you're listening on Phoenix 92.5 FM, what are you doing? Join us live. We're here every Tuesday, 6 p.m. on Nerd to Know Media, um, the YouTube channel, Twitch, all that good stuff. Go to nerdtoknowmedia.com. The link is there, and you will be able to interact with us directly. We'll be back after this short break here on this stream. Um, so we'll talk to you in a few minutes, guys. If you're still in them, we will talk to you next week. Thank you for listening to a Nerd to Know Media production. Okay, and we're back. Still haven't got around to...
Still haven't gotten around to do ads. Um, no. I will eventually. I mean, I recorded one for you a month ago. Don't worry about it. I know. I just, you know. You know, it's fine. Hey, look, is that really loud, by the way? All my windows and everything are shut. No, no, I you're all good. Look, what I say is, look, launching an album during a, during a pandemic is not easy. Well, doing all this... a podcast with a lawnmower out my window, also not easy. I can, but I can't hear it. Oh, oh you can't? I, no. Oh, I can't. Okay. Why well, won't Answer me this fine. though. Does does the guy uh, smell nice? Well, it's a female, and okay. she smells like grass. <laughs> I would imagine because that's the important no, no. thing. I, 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 I oh, that made I, the air. Why I was trying to I, save that for the heart break. <laughs> I, I'm I'm never gonna let that go. That's just the thing. That's, that's a true. That's a to. true story. That is the same show that <laughs> Matt so Matt Morgan wild. threatened to punch me in the face. So. Oh man, you know who you know who hates Matt Morgan like beyond me. I like, hate him. Well, no, well, not only you, but Gary also hates Matt Morgan with oh, passion really? tells. Oh, he hates him. Like just can't I can't stand, stand him. him. And I know. I just I don't understand it. I'm like, okay, um, but yeah, it's just some people have a. It's like my irrational hatred of Cody Rhodes. Just hate him. Well, my my always my, my thing had always been like Matt Morgan. Good if he used steroids would be amazing. Yep, that that's always how I felt. Now I'm not endorsing. No, you've advocated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not advocating. Oh wow! I'm just saying, it's something weird about him. But it's anyway, just, so yeah, I was, you're, I, not I was like, <laughs> you're not advocating, but you're just saying maybe you should consider it. <laughs> maybe, you know, there's things you can do. Yeah, so don't oh, don't hang out outside of a show and insult Matt Morgan. He might um, inadvertently assault. Not, I mean, uh, insult. He might. He has a big fist compared to the size of my head. Is what I'm trying to say. And uh, I backed away. That's fair. I backed no away from many people at that show. I backed away <laughs> from Ted DiBiase Jr. I backed away from Matt Morgan. See, you probably should have used that line on Matt Morgan, and he probably would have been so freaked out he probably wouldn't have went away. I uh, believe me, I crossed <laughs> I crossed a much a much harder line that I won't even share on air. But oh, I will well. say that I I told the promoter I was going to write it up for uh, my wrestling site, so I got him for free. Got two oh, tickets. Nice. I never wrote uh, it up. Well, there, there's a funny, there's a funny story. Um, we were at a TNA show, myself and Gary, and uh, yeah. this is when Jeff Hardy was was in the promotion with Matt, and he gotcha. wasn't allowed to go because you know, obviously, when you're a felon, you can't travel outside mm. of you can't international travel, and this is when he'd just been convicted. So Sting was on the show, and there's a place when they actually have the poster there. I'll post it on our. Uh, I think I, I think I've seen it before. I I took the poster of the TNA lie that uh, Jeff Hardy was injured. Not injured. Oh, in travel. <laughs> um, so I, I said, I said to the security guard, I'm like, here, listen, can I have the poster? I really need it. And he's like, yeah. I'm like, awesome, thank you. So it's framed. Um, but we were watching the show anyway, and there was a really good match with Matt Hardy versus RVD, like phenomenally good match. Okay. And uh, you know, Gary was booing him or like that, and Matt Hardy comes over, and we're in the front row, and he's like, oh, you boo me, but you paid to see him, and he goes, no, I paid to see your junkie brother. Oh no! <laughs> I was just like, "Oh wow, that's fantastic." That's facts right there. Is what yep. that is. Yeah. So yeah, re- the joys of pro wrestling, ladies and gentlemen. They are the joys. They are okay. Drew McIntyre versus Randy Orton. This match was boring as hell. Um, really did not like it, but had a really good ending. Um, a really nice little, you know, uh, screw the pooch ending where uh, Drew McIntyre. You didn't like the McIntyre versus Orton. I, I find, look, Randy Orton is great when he's on. I don't think he works well with Drew McIntyre. Um, yeah, it was an odd it was an odd fit. It was also odd. Like, I know he's held the championship so long, but it's just weird to think of him in the same mindset of a of a Cena or a Flair. I just don't. Who, Orton? Or a Triple H. Like, Orton. in terms of total title runs that they've had, it's just weird yeah. that he's in that category. <laughs> Well, and I feel like it's more because he's been there so long than anything that's else. His, like, that's exactly why. Like, like why? Why is Taker? Why is Taker not at like one of the top of these lists? Because it was during the time period where Cena was winning the championships, and he had to yeah. trade it with somebody, and Edge was gone, so he traded it with Orton, and that's what oh, happened for. And that's that what was, happened. And that's what happened for about ten years, and that's. What oh my gosh! Do you remember the first brand split? Oh or my the, god! The yes, brand reunion. We yes, got, oh. I do. It was terrible. Like it I was just. just Constantly. Cena versus Orton take seventy. I mean, we make fun of of Orton versus Edge, but Cena versus Orton. Somebody like calculated it up, like how many pay per views were main evented by Cena and Orton in like a year, and it was a disturbing amount. Yeah, it's it, it's it's about thirty pay per views. So it, it's way too many, and that's why because Cena had to lose at some point, and it was usually Orton 
and then he'd, oh, he'd win the belt back. And it was just that back and forward for a good 10 years. So that's wow. why. But look, you know, I feel bad for Drew. Um, having people in the crowd virtually or not has helped him a fair bit too. But I think so. the match was, it wasn't great. And here's the thing. Apparently Drew McIntyre is injured now, but that could be storyline. And Orton is going to face Keith Lee at payback for some reason. So it's like, uh, uh, they did show... Okay. I think this was from WrestleMania because part of the show must go on uh, 24 series, but they did show Drew getting his ankle taped up back in April. Mm. So it's possible that he's had something going on for a while now. Could have been. Yeah. Like, I think that's why he, it would make sense why he brought up Keith Lee as well to kind of fill that void. But um, Drew McIntyre is still WWE champion. Uh, okay. Fair enough. Look, the I next like, And you know what? My favorite part of that whole match was actually the buildup when he made the comment about. Uh, Orton, like Orton, should have been fired yeah. for like the literal crap that he had done. I was like, yeah. oh, that's a great <laughs> reference. It is a great reference. That was a great promo as well. Actually, it was yeah. funny at, at the teenage show in Manchester. I was there when Drew McIntyre came out, okay. um, and cut a really good promo. Like when he had just left WWE and he was kind of reinvent. Like TNA is where he kind of became a superstar. Um, and yeah, it was great. So look, I. Don't get me wrong. I am a huge Drew McIntyre fan. I'm glad he's the champion. I just wish it was. I just wish he had something more to do. Well, uh, yeah. Here's what I want. I don't want it to be like Braun Strowman, where he doesn't get to actually be in front of a live crowd with his title. Because mm. Braun got the title, but he just he gave it up. So yeah, but Braun Braun was never supposed to be the champion. You know what though? I, I felt a lot for him. You know, he drove twenty hours straight 20 hours back home on a 21 hour drive and then he gets the call from wd okay we are going to use you at mania and he had to drive all the way back so it was it it humanized him it humanized braun Strowman for me for the first time in a while oh we we got a new background who's in the background background. is that you and teddy biasi it's uh, yeah that was the moment oh my god is that before or after <laughs> to him? I think it was I think it was probably after. That's why okay. he has an odd you notice we're not that close together. <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> oh good lord. Oh Dave, that's so funny. Um, I mean, I'm just gonna lean into it. Again. Yeah, I have to. At this point, there's nothing else you can do because it's gonna be brought up almost every show from now on. Um, <laughs> yeah. um okay. I mean, at least we're not talking about Mike Awesome. I mean, that was really my goal. That's fair. That's fair. Okay. We have one more match. Yeah. We have one more match. And this is like a lesson in stupidity, right? Interesting. Like, literally, right? So, The Fiend versus Brand Strowman. I really liked the whole presentation of this. I thought The Fiend's entrance was great as well with the new setup. I was going to say, best entrance in WWE right now, hands down. Oh, yes. So, so good. But it even, it's added to it so much now in the Thunderdome. Mm -hmm. Um, My dogs agree. Um, I do like how they can dim the LED boards of the fans. Yeah, and like just have it in as like an extended Titan Tron. It's cool. Yeah. Um, right. This match was very it started off really well, then kind of went like it died a horrible death until the end. And then there was a lesson in stupidity. So Braun Strowman takes out a box cutter. And I'm like, oh, he's going to he's he's becoming new Jack. I'm like, all right, cool. Um, <laughs> that's that's no. not what happened. So he instead of cutting Bray Wyatt, which would have been a bit too much. Um, uh, you think? <laughs> that's good. You know, my first thought was, I was oh. like, oh, I guess Braun Strowman's in charge of retribution. I was like, oh, no, I can't be thinking that. WD, what are you doing to me? But my first thought was, I'm like, oh, well, he's he's stealing New Jack's gimmick. Because like, no way New Jack wants to fight Logan Paul in a wrestling match. Really? Yeah. Logan Paul should probably not do that. Well, Logan Paul said, I'll, I, will wrestle, I, I will wrestle any influencer for like a million dollars and Jack's like I'll straight up kill this guy for free I'm like, <laughs> oh. I'm like yeah he would so Logan Paul do not do that you will no, die no, Jack will literally kill you so yeah. it's like so... You, you might be a terrible person but we don't want you to die no like New Jack will make it slow and horrific and it won't be just it won't, it won't be fun like stay seriously. away from any traffic would be our advice stay away from New Jack Full stop. Um, he is yeah, a scary completely. man. You know he no he no showed that Q and A naturally. Oh really? It's very dis- Yeah. I didn't yeah. get my new Jack Q and A. I was disappointed. That's probably a good man. You don't want to be near him. He's a scary man. But anyway, man. like his thing, like <sighs> Braun so Strowman. I actually, I like the match honestly. Right, but here's the problem kind of. with it. Here's the problem with it. Right, it died a death in the middle. Right, 
Yeah. And then he went into the ring, he got the box cutter out and started cutting the ring up. And I'm like, okay, that's weird. But it took him so long to cut the ring up to expose the boards. I'm like, you're taking far too long here. And then that's how he loses. He he takes two sister Abigails onto the board and then gets pinned. I'm like, you dumbass, what are you doing? It didn't, that did not flow well. Like I, I did not it, it expect just... him to immediately, because it wasn't even like he really tried to fight it off. You know what else? No. We got well, hit talking once, about hit, spots hit again in this, because I don't Sorry, want you to jump to what's going to happen right after that spot. No, I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to jump to that. I just want to talk I, about the match first right, itself. Because yeah. I, I want to back up to something in the match that bothered me. Hmm. Um, what's up with tables nowadays? Why aren't they breaking? Uh, maybe got a different supplier. I don't know. Uh, like the last couple shows I've seen where they've tried to put people through tables, you know what happened? Sherman tried to put Bray through the announce table and it just kind of, kind of like bounced off of it. Well, the announce table never hasn't broke properly in a long time. That's what I'm saying. It's been like yeah. the past, like, I don't know, six months, a year. It seems like they've done something different. Yeah. It's whatever. I think it's because they're using more kind of like permanent tables where it's like, they know they're going to be there for long periods of time. It's not something where they quickly put it together and then that's taken. Uh, they again. don't have to change locations. And that's probably what it, that would be my guess based on it. Cause structurally, if you have something that's going to be there for what a couple of months, you're probably going to be like, well, look, we'll probably put this together so it doesn't collapse. But if you're putting something they're going to take away in a couple mm -hmm. of hours, that's probably why. And that would be my guess with the announce okay. tables. So I would love to see like, like back in the tables are breaking every other match days. Like Michael Cole put a, cup of coffee down on the table and it just collapses on yeah but that's why because they're like here this is going to break anyway so why would we bother but now they're like no yeah. look they need, need it there and again they're using it for multiple shows as well multiple times a week so but does it hit you does it does it hit a weird chord with you when somebody gets slammed into a table and it doesn't break uh outside of japan yeah yeah because like it's an odd because yeah. even when batista had his match against triple h at mania Hmm. remember the, the one break. table didn't break but then triple h speared him through a third table and it broke it was a yeah. weird like i don't know it's like i don't know man i'm kind of if they're gonna have that spot you think they would have been like here which table do i use because right that, that's what i do if i'm like you know hey we're gonna do this spot which table was gonna break instead of just we'll just see but then again this whole match felt very sloppy it felt very you know not well put together did you like the new braun Strowman? the new the i was trying to figure out what, i was trying meaner. to figure i was trying to figure what was different i'm like oh we got a haircut yeah yeah he did he shaved his head and he uh he he lifted poor alexa bliss up into the air on raw that fiend that he, was fiend. he was the real he fiend he was the real was the real fiend. nobody should treat the goddess the exactly like that nobody should. alexa bliss is an absolute saint and a goddess and you should uh, yeah leave I, her alone. I would she should <laughs> she's the best <laughs> she is the best you no know, she i completely agree with you but i feel like I've, I've hit my meter of things i'm allowed to say about divas oh divas about oh, where <laughs> the sexism dave how dare you you're canceled i i know this show will not be on the air <laughs> Oh no! Yo, Bowl for Soup wrote a song about Alexa Bliss, like 1985 Bowling for Soup. Oh, also 1985 wasn't written by Bowling for Soup. Did you know that too? No. Ah, here we go. Okay. So, okay, right. I love Bowling for Soup. They're great. Um, so yeah, 1985 wasn't written for Bowling for Soup. It's actually a cover, which is unbelievable. I found this out a couple of months ago. The guy who oh. actually wrote the song is in the video, and they're like okay. all along they told us that it was there. So yeah, they wrote a song recently about Alexa Bliss and it's called Alexa Bliss and it's like, it's a great song. It's Did different. they want it to be like her theme song and then W is like, no, apparently, the royalties? No, apparently what happened is Alexa Bliss is a huge fan of Ballin' for Soup. Showed oh. up one time, met Jared and he's like, oh hey. And then he realized a couple of months later that she's Alexa Bliss and she was wearing a Ballin' for Soup t-shirt and wrote her a song. Oh, that's cute. Like it's That's literally what the song is about, like. What's her relationship status? I'm just I'm gonna do some googling. I think she I think she's dating someone. Not too sure. I mean, how could she not be? Well, uh, that's that's a fair point. That's a fair point. But yeah, mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I I felt like I hate the way Alexa Bliss was being used as kind of like a, you know, a pawn in this. I thought it was like kind of beneath her. But um, you know, it got Braun Strowman to be a bit darker, but it also got him to be a lot more stupid. Uh, and that was the that was the the name of the game here. Braun Strowman 
be himself in this match. Yes, absolutely. Like, I'm sorry. It, it, it's like, you know, back in the day where you'd have like a TLC match and one lad. Would oh, spend... you're right. Yeah, that's her fit. That's her. I'm, I'm clearly paying no attention to you. I've got other stuff going on here. Um, yeah, she appeared in the in a Bowling for Soup music video, too. Yeah, she's actually in it. Yep. yep. And good news, everybody. She is going to start a podcast called Uncool with Alexa Bliss and starting in August 2020. May have already started. I don't know. We, we need to try and get Alexa Bliss on the show. That'd be great. Whoa, she used to be engaged to Murphy? Yeah. Wait, who, who wrote this on Wikipedia? They ended their engagement in 2018, comma, but remain friends. <laughs> they probably do. I don't know. They probably wrote themselves. Anyone can write it on Wikipedia. She got a pet pig named Larry Steve. Yeah, that sounds, sounds great. It's also in the song. Okay. The oh, song, really? this song is very biographical. I'm going to have to listen. I, I can't find any. <laughs> okay. If you type in Bowl Over Soup, Alexa Bliss. No, I'm I'm trying to find out if she has a I have she, Dave is creeping now on Alexa Bliss. <laughs> I mean, that's not exactly what's happening. You were looking up man, shut up. Uh, <laughs> that's Dave not what's happening. Dave wants to know what Alexa Bliss smells like. Listen, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who is this dude? Ryan Cabrera? Well, he's spending more time with Ryan. The Miz. Oh, oh, apparently the Miz set them up. Okay. Wow. There you go. There oh, you but go. They, I don't know. Because of Rona, they haven't oh, because they haven't been seen together in a while. Oh, she went to Disneyland with him. How cute. There's no no official word. Well, guys, I'm glad you're updated. I'm glad I'm back on the show to keep you guys entertained with. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what has happened? You know what happened? We've fallen off the no, rail. No, here's what hey, happened. Listen, here's I'll what tell happened. you what happened. You never yeah. saw this show coming, folks. <laughs> no, the minute we brought up the fact that Renee Young left, Dave just went completely off the bat. <laughs> completely my, just yeah. gone. Just gone completely. The whole show was a write off because of that. My head just started spinning. It's gone. <laughs> it's just... I started admitting things I never should have admitted. <laughs> <laughs> oh my oh, gosh. Man. No, but seriously, check out that song, uh, Alexa Bliss by Bowling for Soup. It's, uh, it's super good. It's super good. Um, also, yeah, the fact that 1985 isn't a Bowling for Soup song like changed the whole world for me. Um, I couldn't believe it. The lies. The lies and slander. But, um, that Why is the right. slander about what? About that Bowling for Soup wrote 1980, 1985. I mean, they did. Know. They didn't, though. That's the I thing. Mean, no, he didn't. Like demonstrably, they didn't write it, which is okay. Although, but... f- funny story though, the same thing with Stacy's mom. Everyone thought they wrote. No, song, even they didn't. Wait, you telling me that the the people who got the radio that wasn't that wasn't their song? No, it was ba- by a band called Fountain, Fountain of Wayne's, but they did a cover of it specifically because they everyone thought they wrote it, and it's actually better than the original. Same with 1985. Huh. Yep. Well, there you go. I'm glad anyway, I found that one out. Yeah, going back to the show. Right. right, back. Yeah, let's get back on track here. Okay, so at the end of this match, so The Fiend is now your WWE Universal Champion yet again. So we have pretty much just come full circle and they're right back to where they were before Goldberg showed up. So right before Saudi Arabia. I think this is a good decision. It makes sense. Uh, the Fiend is actually a world champion, not Braun Strowman, who uh, is kind of a gimp. And um, I don't know if I ever meet Ron Strowman, I will not say that because he'd kill me. Um, no, I actually think he's really. I'm telling you, man, I watched I watched this WrestleMania 24 show must go on, which is all about they're openly talking about the fact that there's no fans and all this. And they gave a lot of screen time to uh, to Braun Strowman. I'm sure he's a nice guy, but I just don't buy him as a world champion. You don't buy him as a world champion? No, I don't. I, right. it's, well, kind of, I guess... kind of, it's kind of like the big show. You know, I'm like, yeah, you're going to be world okay. champion, but you're also not, you're not going to hold it for long periods of time, right? It's that like... was actually kind of almost exactly what Sturman said. He made oh, a really? comment where he was like, well, not about the length of time, but he said, like, I view myself as carrying on the legacy of Andre, Taker, Kane, um, and Big Show. Like, well, I feel like that's not my Taker. Role. He's not Kane, but yeah. Andre and Big Show, I totally would see that, and that's see because, the problem. The problem with even Big guys, Show was more. I mean, it, 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 it's a cool story about you know bullying he went through as a kid, be a star, blah blah blah. But yeah, it was good. All right, well, I'll definitely check it out. 
Um, no, but I, why are you? Well, uh, why? No, is this the twenty four hour, the twenty four seven thing that was on after SummerSlam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I actually did want to watch it, but it no, it is. Good. It's great. So I, I will watch it. Yeah. Um, but okay. now I understand. I now understand why Renee Young wasn't in it that much. <laughs> yeah, because she, she's gone. Bye, Renee. Bye, Renee. Uh, okay. Oh, so she has the, one of the creepiest models in like a 2K game. I think it's 2K20, the 2012, where she just looks inhuman. Um, Who, Renee? Renee, yeah. She has like a really creepy model. Or it's just 2016. I don't know which one, but it's really creepy. I mean, it might but, as well be 2020 since I apparently was predicting the future. It has. It almost to the letter. So, right, we have the Fiend, and he's the world champion. Then, as he's celebrating, bang, Roman Reigns comes in and hits him. Now, the Dirts have said, oh, he turned heel. I'm like, how did he turn heel? He was against two heels. It makes no sense. It's like, <laughs> who did he turn heel on? It's like, I I got ridiculous. the indication that he was turning heel by beating up Strowman more. Yeah, but it's like, both of them are heels. See, I don't view Strowman as a heel. Well, he hurt, I guess this... he hurt Alexa Bliss. Yeah, but it's just Alexa Bliss. Who cares? I care. Oh wait, ten minutes ago I cared. Yeah. Um, see. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm trying to. Okay, I'm trying to. I'm trying to suspend my disbelief. You it's, can't you suspend ever, your disbelief. This listen, is you ever try and was... hold two thoughts in your head at the same time that are completely opposing? Yeah, and that's you called... accept them both completely that, true. That, that's kind of that, what I'm having to do with Strowman right that's now. That's called co- cognitive dissonance. Yeah, there's a lot of cognitive dissonance that's going on. Because yeah. on one hand, I saw the real Braun Strowman crying during a documentary. On the other hand, I saw Braun Strowman uh, laying a finger on that goddess, who, by the way, was a cool part of the whole like Firefly Swamp House, whatever. Right on. Yeah, she was thing. great. Yeah. So, Roman Reigns is back. You told me he was fired. You told me I never was, said he was fired. You told me he was blacklisted. He would never be mentioned again. You he wasn't. Me, you told me. No, oh, come on. There were posters of him during the Money in the Bank match. Uh, you know, he wasn't taken off. He was his merch was, wasn't shown as much, I guess. OK, you might have been kind of right. But the point is. I told y'all that Roman would be back, and he's back as a heel, and he's back without a chest protector. I like how, this. How is he a heel, though? He hasn't done anything heelish. Well, he, he beat up Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman beats up everybody. Well, so does Stone Cold. There you go. I don't think he's a heel at all. He is, look, unless he comes out and starts berating the fans or whatever. Then... Okay, here's why he's a heel, because the WWE pumped in booze. Oh, okay, then fair enough. Is that what happened? What, did you not watch the show? I did. I just, you know, I stopped listening to the commentary team. Like, it's no, the, the minute he started talking, it just turned out. Like, I was watching the, the Japanese shows for the True Penny show. And I had not, like, listen, I know a couple of words in Japanese because I'm a weeb. But, like, I don't speak Japanese. I don't claim to. And I had no clue what they were saying. But you know what? It was great. That's what's going on with me trying to watch these Brock Lesnar matches yeah, for and our I, upcoming yeah, show with Adam. And, I'm like, and yeah, I don't and yeah, know. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, and it's it's tolerable, and you don't feel like you want to like stab yourself in the ear. So the minute and I yet start... I watch Iron Chef all the time. I think it's a great show. I still don't know what you're saying. I appreciate the subtitles. But there you go. You know, it's just like it's the feeling of it compared to Michael Cole and whatever flutes they bring out. It's like this is terrible. This... Bring it. <laughs> it's like it's just, as long as Michael Cole is there, it's like. This is all bad all the time. Oh, so come on, Cole no, Miner he, for life. He's so bad, dude. He's phenomenal. No, he's not. That's AJ Styles. Yeah, that that's that that's true. He's, Actually, can I say what? Uh, it's right here. I <laughs> I like uh, Joe on commentary, but they get him to say some really dumb shit. Like, yeah, they are. It's like why are you getting him to say that? It makes no sense. It's like just stop ruining Samoa Joe, please. And then you can tell when it's Joe talking as yeah. Joe because out of nowhere will come this really brilliant point. Yeah, we go. Oh, that like I feel more about this match. I have some more emotional connection to this match now. And yeah, it's you can tell when it's a line and when it's Samoa Joe, and yep. it's just, it's night and day. And you're like, oh my god, look what are they do. <laughs> They'll get him to repeat something that just either didn't happen or happened completely different. And then he'd be like, yeah, that happened. And it's like, what? And then he'll then he'll contradict himself and be like, "No, actually, this was going." On. You're like, "Yeah, that's what happened." It's just, it's 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 so infuriating. So my I'd brain kind of my brain kind of turns off audio with WWE because I'm like, "All right, 
All right, well, listen, heel or face, are you excited that Roman's back? I got to be honest. I I, uh, I don't know why, I don't but know. I got a little excited. I don't know. Did you, uh, what's it? Uh, we have Relic Mod Pet. Did you know Relic is killer spelled backwards? Yes. Yes. Yes, it is. Yeah. That's that's what they did on uh, TNA when he was with Black Rain. Didn't we that talk the about whole... this like two weeks ago? Yeah, we did. So thanks we for did. the thanks for the reference there, Relic Mod Yeah, we appreciate it. We appreciate it. Um, who was Relic? Uh, I don't know who Relic was, but he teamed he teamed with Black Rain, which right. was uh, Dustin Rhodes when he was in. Yeah, why, how do we get the? I don't know. It just came in the chat. So oh, okay. I, I love the chat. Yeah, the chat's great. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, as if my train of thought is not derailed enough for this past hour and a half. Thank you for. There we go. Thank, yep. So that's that, and they're gone. So I know Johnny the Bull apparently was Relic. So oh. I don't know who that is, but there you go, John Johnny the Bull. Okay. Yep. Okay. So you're you Thank you're you, chat. meh on Roman? Yeah. You're meh. Uh, I'm not meh on Roman. It's more like, like yeah, I get he's like the closest thing to a real star he have, but it's like okay, so now we know what's going to happen. Again, it's WWE booking where you're like, right, he's going to destroy Bray and win the belt. Would you have preferred that he came in on Drew McIntyre? Yeah, yeah. I think that was my issue too because I thought, I'm, I I, that the fiend is so hot right now. Yeah, they've got. This reminded me almost of, and, and no disrespect to Mr. West, but this reminded me of, that's a line from something. I don't even know why I said that. Of when John, yeah, I, I lost my train of thought. Renee Young, it's really messed with my head today. Um, I, I totally lost, oh, Roman Reigns, Quebec, Cena. oh, when Cena would come back. Yeah, and there would be like a hot star that was up on the rise, and they'd gotten the title, and they were really running with it. But oh, Cena's coming back from an injury, so it's time to catapult the title back to him. And that's yep. how I kind of felt with Roman. Yep. I was like, "That's what that's what it is so hot right now, and they're going to destroy it just to give the belt back to Roman because we're going into the fall, and yep. they're going to want to get the ratings back up because yep. hopefully we'll come out of this lockdown Thunderdome stuff." I know they're going to do, they're going to do the opposite because everybody wants the fiend to you know, be the fiend, want to be the champion for a while. And it's right. That's the problem. I think this is a very, I'm happy to see Roman Reigns is back. I just think he'd be better suited with Drew McIntyre. I agree. Do something there. Um, because that's, you know, obviously where Randy Orton is. So that. It makes more sense. But again, Fox is Fox. They need to have that star power. So that's what you're going to get. And there's a question well, here in wait, the chat. Hold on. That, Isn't, am I getting my shows mixed up now? Yes. He, yeah. Smackdown is on Fox. Right, but he came out. Wait, Bray Wyatt's on Fox? Yeah. That's why AJ's not champ. Oh, we didn't even get to address that, by the way. What the heck happened to that Intertidal Continental? What? Yeah. We'll what? get to that. We'll get to that. And then we'll get to that with Payback. Don't worry. Ugh. Question in the chat. Did Roman get new teeth? I have no idea. Um, oh, a whole new grill. I have no idea. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, a whole new grill. Okay, so Good overall, Roman get new teeth. I, I, whoever you are, I love you. Please tune in every week. <laughs> you, um, you like to pick out the tiny little details like I do. <laughs> you found a fun home. Um, right. So overall, grade of the show, what would you give it? Um, am I grading it on lockdown scale, or am I grading it on in general? Overall, in, in, in general, because I have, I have a different scale pattern here. Okay. Well, okay. Well, give it give it lockdown then. Twenty twelve scale. Uh, um, 2012 scale. Oh, 2020 uh, scale. Sorry. I mean, yeah, we, th we thought 2012 was the end, but it turned out to be 2020. Um, um, a. I would say two. I would say it's an A two. It's it's, it's it's the best pay per view of the lockdown period. The Thunderdome definitely. concept was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, there were so many matches on here that I loved. Um, I thought. I thought, I mean, any show that I come out and I think the women's match is the best match on the show always blows my mind. So that whole Sasha thing I thought was great with Asuka. Um, even, you know, as much as we berated Dominic and Seth Rollins, it was still a, a heck of an emotional match to watch. Oh, yeah. And, and again, and again, only... and again, continues the SummerSlam tradition of street fights. Right. I think the only clunker really for me was the tag match. Here's a question for you. What was worse, Extreme Rules or Super Showdown from this year? I don't even remember Super Showdown. 
I liked Extreme Rules tonight. Or, no, no, because you made me watch TNA and I liked that more. Yeah, no. Extreme Rules was probably the worst pay-per-view of 2020. Yeah, the whole eye, eye thing was just... Yeah, Extreme Rules was the worst pay-per-view I've ever seen in my life. Um, well, I won't go that far, but it was No, I, I will go that far. Um, Super Showdown, when was that? That was February. That was in... Yeah, that was February. Who? Why do I not remember this show? It was oh, because when... we weren't doing this yet, so I probably yes. wasn't wrestling. Yeah, yeah. It was when... Uh, <laughs> It was when The Fiend lost the belt in Saudi Arabia. Oh, uh, okay. See, I always do watch those shows because I love the pyro. Mm, By the way, I'm getting a haircut this week, guys. Any suggestions? Because look at this nonsense going on. I've been rocking this whole podcast. It's video form. <laughs> love it. It has. Yeah, uh, it's been a lo- in the chat. It's been a long year. Yeah, it has. But it doesn't feel like it. It feels like it's been like a write-off year. So. You're really like halfway done. This is the weirdest. Well, eight months. We're nearly in September. So, you know. Yeah. It's it's just it's kind of funny because like in wrestling a lot has happened but in the world a lot has happened but also nothing has really happened so I'm kind of like right let's just kind of get through it <laughs> let's just kind of just keep going because let's uh, just keep going you know thank God we have wrestling you know because it, it actually has kind of given us something to to focus on even if it hasn't been great but I think you know the the, the periods of really terrible shows now are kind of over because WWE kind of have to innovate but um, Thunderdome great way to go forward. Um, you know, well, one last question for you, man. Yeah. What do you think the tagline? You'll never see it coming. What do you think it was? Was it was it Roman the whole time? Now we know it's WWE, and they probably just came up with something on the spot. But do you think it was Roman the whole time? Like when they made this tagline for it, what what do you think it was? Because they tried to tease throughout the night in different matches of saying like, "Oh, you never saw that coming," with like a yeah. spot that they do or something. What do you think I, the tagline I was for? I don't know. I think it was just kind of like. Maybe it, maybe it probably was for Roman, but I think they were just kind of going, "Oh, we're doing this differently" or something like that. It, it, it's a stupid tag tagline. Because really it could have been tagline. could have been the Thunderdome. Could have been the Thunderdome. I don't know, but the but we saw that the, on SmackDown. Yeah, so. exactly. So look, I don't know. I was just kind of like, "Yeah." We got a question. Can you pull off a Death Hawk? I don't know what a Death Hawk is. So, oh, like a. Kind of... Oh, there you go. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm glad my sister works this salon. <laughs> but yeah, look, you'll never see it coming. Um, do we need to stop at these taglines? It don't make sense. Um, well, you know what? You didn't enjoy the horror show, everybody. You didn't. You didn't like that horror show? I thought that was. Yeah. Oh. Thought that was absolutely fantastic, personally. Yeah. The yeah. The less said about that, the better. We've already covered that as well. That so. was the bad. Anytime I, TNA puts on a better product, you know that's just trouble. Here we go. That's or in my case, I, like. I didn't see it. Fair enough. Ah, there we go. Yep. AJ and Renee Young, RAP, Renee Young and WWE. They missed out. You know, it's it is what it is. You know, and look, uh, AJ's pointing at me, and Renee's looking at me. This is the best of both worlds. That's your Hannah Montana reference for the night, guys. I'm on a roll. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, look, this is going to wrap. <laughs> it's like it's time. It's time. All right, guys. This is going to wrap up uh, this edition of the Wrestling Rewind Show Thirty Six. Guys, if you liked what we've done, we're here every single Tuesday at six PM uh, Greenwich Mean Time, and uh, it's one PM Eastern. We are live. Thanks to everyone in the chat. Um, you guys really make it more interesting. We really appreciate it. Again, if you want to uh, chime in on questions or topics for the show, remember we do look back to past wrestling shows, so you can either just leave a comment in the chat. Leave a comment below the video on YouTube. Uh, yeah, man, there's 35 ones to catch up on. They're all over on, on YouTube and there to no media. Um, you can just get them all there or a few of them on Twitch, on Spotify. Now it goes you, might, well, you so. might want to start at episode 17. I'm just saying. 17 is when Dave joins the show, all right. So, uh, yeah, pop on, and, <laughs> and that's when they kind of get a bit more fun. But, yeah, look, um, <laughs> we, do, we do open them up as well to fan submissions. So, near to no media at gmail.com is if you want to pick a random show. You know, just please, but maybe w- not completely random. Yeah, I, I will say the last fan submission show we did, there was nothing to talk about. So if you are picking a show, at least give us something fun to watch, because uh, that would, that would be good. Um, but yeah, it's open to anything that we can get access to easily. So something on the network or whatever, we will be able to do them. Um, but yeah, seventeen is when Dave joined the show, so um, they're all over on Nerd to No Media YouTube channel there on Spotify and all that good stuff as well. Dave, is there anything you'd like to plug before we wrap up for the evening? Uh, you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter at the Dave Stevens. That's this little thing you've been looking at all night here, the Dave Stevens. Do that. Follow me on Twitter. I totally use it a lot. I don't know. Uh, Twitter. Most, mostly to promote the show, quite frankly. 
Well, that's fair. I'm on Twitter a lot, pretty much talking about wrestling or something that computer related. So uh, yeah. that's where you can find me at Dara WV. And of course, of course, the show's Twitter is at Nertino Media. Nertino Media.com is where all our stuff is well. Nertino Media everywhere. Uh, oh, also, uh, mm. we got one more. The David Arquette documentary is out on Friday. Oh, mm. OK. We will definitely put that in the hopper. And uh, thank you for the suggestion. We'll look into that. Is Next, that who's releasing that? I'm not too sure. I'm going to have to do some research on it. Mm. But uh, next week, we're probably going to have our look back at Brock Lesnar in Japan and uh, or else payback or maybe both. But definitely payback will be coming up. And then uh, the next show we have. I scheduled. mean, let's be honest, guys. There's no way we don't talk about AJ Styles match. So, yeah, exactly. So that's what's going to be there. And then AJ Styles and then um, not only AJ Styles, but Brock Lesnar in Japan. Um, we'll be looking at too guys listen again thank you very much for joining us thank you very much to the chat we'll be back next week same time every Tuesday 6pm here on Phoenix 92.5 FM and which YouTube and all that good stuff see you bye guys Thank you for listening to a Nerd to Know Media production.